there, everybody. Dan Calloway here and uh, coming to you from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And today I want to do something I haven't done in a while, and that is I'm going to do a system uh, setup and review, product review uh, of an operating system that I looked at oh, a little over a year ago. Uh, it's not a Linux distribution, it's not a Windows distribution, it is an Unix distribution. It's called Ghost BSD 1904. Uh, which is a Berkeley software distribution um, based on Unix uh, from AT&T. And the last time I looked at this, I believe it was 18.04 perhaps, and this is 19.04, so it's a year old. And uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. I'm going to go ahead, I'm in uh, VirtualBox 6.0. I'm going to go ahead and select Machine and New to create a new VM pops up this window here. I'm going to call this Ghost BSD 1904-XFCE uh, because I'm using the XFCE desktop interface. Coming down here to type and I'm going to select BSD as the type and then it's based on 3BSD by the way and so I'm going to select 3BSD 64-bit. For memory size I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, 4096, which is 4 gigs of RAM, 4096 megabytes. Um, create the virtual hard disk now, and I'm going to say create. All right, I'm going to give this thing uh, for file size uh, 75 gigabytes of allocated space, BDI, uh, and dynamically allocated, which means it will start out small and grow, but not exceed 75 gigabytes. I'm going to click create here. And um, so it's created the VDI. Now let's go into settings. I'm going to click the settings here and tweak this a little bit. Um, advanced, uh, we don't need to make any changes here. I'm not sharing any clipboard or drag and drop capability or anything like that. Description I've already got. We don't need any further. This is a VM. And then disk encryption, I'm not going to use that at all. For system here, I'm going to do what I normally do. Uh, here for the motherboard, we've got 4096 megabytes. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the floppy disk, and then I'm going to select hard disk and move it up to order on the list here to boot up. So when I'm completed with this process and boot up, um, it will boot up on the hard disk first rather than the optical, and uh, that'll take care of having to remove the optical drive, uh, which I don't like to do. Processor, I'm going to give this uh, one CPU, uh, not two for acceleration here. I'm going to enable VTX, AMDX, and also enable nested paging. For para-virtualization interface, I'm going to leave it at the default. You know, I can select legacy minimum. If I was working with Hyper-V, I could do that there, or KVM if I was in uh, a Linux distribution. All right, so I'm going to use default here. For, uh, for display, I'm going to give it the full 128 megabytes of uh, video memory. I'm not going to worry about remote display or recording. Um, I'm going to be using the graphics controller VBOX VGA. I'm going to enable 3D acceleration, all right? But I'm not going to enable 2D video acceleration, just the 3D video acceleration. Um, for storage, I'm going to select the empty here and go over and select the CD-ROM, the optical disk file, and tell it to select Ghost BSD 19.04-xfce.iso, uh, which is the ISO I've already downloaded. And it's installed out on my F drive, which is a Western Digital Enterprise Black, out on the uh, enclosure that I have a dual bay enclosure in an ISOs folder. So I keep all my ISOs out there. Okay, so for audio, I'm going to go ahead and yes, I do want to have audio. So I'm going to select audio controller ICH. AC97, Windows Direct Sound, enable audio output, but I'm not going to enable audio input because I'm not going to be using any audio jacks or anything that, like that into the operating system. For network, I am going to use one adapter and I'm going to change this to from a NAT to bridged adapter using my Realtek PCI GDE family controller. The reason I'm going to do that, making this a bridged adapter, is I want to be, uh, I want the uh, Ghost BSD operating system to be on my local LAN when I'm completed with this process so I can touch it if I want to by 
you know, SSHing into it, and et cetera, all right? Uh, no serial ports, USB. I am going to, to select the option for USB 3.0. No shared folders or user interface. I'm going to click OK, all right? So I'm ready to launch this thing, and so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to click the Start button here. And it's going to come up, and I'm going to immediately change the view so we can uh, get a better view of this. I'm going to select View, and I'm going to Full Screen Menu, okay, or Mode. All right, so we are in the uh, boot up process here. It comes up to a live CD version of GhostBSD, and then we'll do an install after that point. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to do this, not too long, but uh, it does have to uh, go through this configuration here of getting everything set up for the VM in VirtualBox 6.0. If you haven't used VirtualBox 6.0, I uh, highly recommend it. It's a great hypervisor. Okay, so you come up to this screen now for X configuration menu. You have a, a several options you can choose here. I'm going to go ahead and tell it I want Xorg. Uh, because I do want to use a desktop. It's already on OK, so I'm just going to hit the Enter key on the keyboard. And now it should be coming up to, should auto log me in because it's a live CD. And it should go to full screen rendering, hopefully, if everything works out. I've done a 1920 by 1080 widescreen monitor. Yeah, it's going to do that for me. Looks nice. And you should get a background here in a moment. A wallpaper instead of this gray. It does take a little while to load. And it should be coming up now. Okay. So here we are. This is Ghost BSD uh, 1904. XFCE, and um, it uh, comes up to the default background here. Uh, we have a couple of icons out on the desktop, trash, file system, home, the install button, and ghost BSD here. Okay, so let's go ahead and install uh, ghost BSD um, on the heart, you know, on the uh, computer, and um, so we have a VM of the installed version instead of the live CD. So let me go ahead and click here and come over to the uh, install button. And let me right click on it and execute it. And so that's going to go ahead and launch the uh, installation process hopefully here in a moment. And so here it comes. And so this is the installer for GhostBSD. And let's see if I can get this to come down a little bit. Oh, I can't, so that's okay. Um, all right, so let me go ahead. We've got English, and so let me click Next. Uh, English here for keyboard setup, Next. America, and I'm going to select New York City. That's where I'm at in that area on the East Coast. All right, so actually not in New York City, but New York will work. Next. I'm going to use the ZFS full disk configuration. That's recommended option for BE. Uh, I could use the UFS full disk or custom disk. I'm just going to use uh, ZFS. Click Next. All right, and this is a VM, so I'm just going to select the ADA0 feed box hard disk. It's going to give me a 512 megabyte of swap and a partition scheme that is a GPT. Um, so. Let me click next here. Uh, I'm selecting the boot option as free BSD BIOS loader only. I'm going to select next. Uh, I'm going to give the administrator a password here, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, and they match, and so now let me click next. Um, for a real name, put in uh, Dan Calloway. For a host name, I'm going to give it ghost. BSD 1904 XFCE. Let me just do a XFCE underscore VM. There we go. Um, username, I'm going to tell it uh, Data Pioneer. 
for password, I'll put that in. match and I'm going to use not the fish shell but I'm going to use bash and click install all right so ghost BSD now is going to go out and start its install process let me bring that down to the center of the screen so it's it's going to install first thing it's going to be doing is going to be uh, setting up the ZFS file system at dev ADA 0p2 and uh, this is going to take a while and so what I'm going to do is stop the video and when it's completed uh, I'll come back. Okay, so I've logged back into um, GhostBSD 19.04, and I'm ready to review this. Uh, let's take a look at what's available. Out on the desktop here, we have the trash icon. We've got the file system, and we have the home folder. Typical stuff. We've got the uh, taskbar down at the bottom here. Uh, we have the network information. Uh, here we have uh, some usage information on CPU usage. Uh, here we have other usage information as well for performance. We've got a calendar, uh, which is the Orange calendar, uh, date and time. And then we have the date over here, Saturday, uh, 10 August, uh, 2019. Let's take a look at the menu. Let's come down and take a look at that. Um, Got some things on favorites. I've got the terminal emulator, the file manager, the mail reader, web browser, appearance, desktop, display, and simple screen recorder. If I click on display, you can see I am running the 1920 by 1080 with a refresh rate of 60. So this thing came up automatically. I didn't have to do anything with it. Um, and it found my uh, resolution for my 1920 by 1080 widescreen monitor really like that when that happens. I didn't even have to install VirtualBox guest editions or Linux editions in order to make this happen. So uh, I really like that. Appreciate it. Let me close that. And um, if I come back up now, I've got uh, other things here. Let's look at accessories. I've got Application Finder, Bulk Rename, Clipman, GVim, Mousepad, Notes, Mirage, uh, Global Time, Plank, Screenshot, Task Manager, let me scroll down. I've got Thunar File Manager, if you click on that. Um, this is your file manager in uh, GhostBSD. Uh, very nice file manager, by the way. Um, and let me see if there's anything in, yeah, I've got something in the Pictures folder. If I right click on it and open that with uh, the Shotwell Viewer, uh, we'll take a look at what we got there. So this is the screenshot of the desktop here. Uh, it's very nice. All right, so I can take snapshots as well with screenshot. Let's go back. Uh, under accessories, um, as I mentioned, I think I have all of them here. Vim and Xburn was the other two, were the other two I didn't show you. Under education, I've got uh, LibreOffice Math. Under graphics, there's Document Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, and Shotwell. Under Internet, we have Firefox Web Browser, Ghost BSD IRC. Uh, if you're into Internet Relay Chat, we've got Hex Chat. If you don't like the Ghost BSD IRC chat uh, interface, Pigeon Internet Messenger, uh, Thunderbird Mail Client. I don't personally use a mail client anymore. I just use the web because I have Proton Mail, so I just get on the web browser and use web-based mail. And then we have the Transmission uh, BitTorrent Client. Let's get into 
the web browser and see what version we're running here in GhostBSD. Uh, it's probably some version of Quantum, probably uh, pretty close to the latest version because um, this is a, a recent download. You start a new session here. Um, and so if I go into um, Pancake and go down to Help and About Firefox, you can see that it is Firefox Quantum 67.0 for 64-bit uh, Ghost BSD. So very nice, latest, latest edition. Go ahead and close that. Let's close the web browser as well. All right, let's come back down here and um, get back into internet, which is where we left off. We've got, uh, we finished there, multimedia. We've got audio mixer, Xale, Gnome MPV, which is a uh, multimedia player and video player, uh, pulse audio volume, simple screen recorder, which is what I'm using to record this video with, by the way, in um, Ghost BSD. VLC Media Player, which does not come here out of the box. I install that as well. Uh, Xburn, we've got Office here, Dictionary, Document Viewer, LibreOffice Base, uh, LibreOffice Draw, LibreOffice, the entire suite, basically. And then we've got the LibreOffice main interface. We've got the calendar and the global time. Under Settings, we have Accessibility, Appearance, uh, Desktop, um, let me go into appearance here, and I'm on the XFCE curve right now, uh, but I kind of like the uh, the Vimix dark, so I'm going to select that, close, so I'm switch to Vimix dark here. All right, and so now um, let's go back in here and go down to multimedia, and so we are, um, well, we're actually we're in Office, I believe. I believe we finished that up, so let's go to settings, and then Appearance, desktop. With desktop, you can change the uh, your backgrounds. Uh, so we've got a ton of backgrounds here that we can choose from. Um, I like a lot of these. Uh, the one I'm on right now, obviously, is this one right here. But I can change it. And um, so you got quite a few here. If you don't like the ones that are in the Ghost BSD folder, you can obviously go out and select the ones you want. From Data Pioneer, you can get into the Pictures folder if you've got your own pictures you want to choose from. All right, so let me go ahead and close this. And let's get back into um, Settings again. And uh, we have File Manager, Keyboard, Mouse and Touchpad, um, the Arrange Preferences panel, Power Manager, Preferred Applications, Print Settings, uh, settings editor for all the uh, settings uh, that you have. The settings manager to manage all the graphical settings. Update station for updating the operating system. Uh, Windows manager for tweaks. Uh, workspaces. Um, let's get into workspaces. I'm going to go ahead. I've got four workspaces set up right here. I'm going to bump that up to uh, six. All right. And let me go ahead and close that. And so I've got six separate workstations that I can choose from now if I want. Uh, I can make that uh, two rows or multiple rows if, even if I like. Um, settings again, let's get down. I think we we're almost done here. Um, XFCE terminal. All right, we'll get into the terminal in a moment. And then system is the last thing we need to look at. Bulk rename, ghost BSD, HTOP, uh, print settings, software station, Task Manager, the Thunar File Manager we mentioned earlier, the Update Station, the Terminal, and the Editor. Okay, so that's what we have available there. Let's get into the Terminal and take a look around. Uh, so if I right-click here and open Terminal here, it's going to open the Terminal up on the desktop. Uh, now the Terminal is kind of neat because I've got opacity set up here where I can look through the Terminal screen at the desktop. If I grab the top of this uh, window and bring it to the top, it goes to full screen, which I really like. And if I don't want that, I can pull it down and uh, break that full screen into a minimized screen. Let me do a uname uh, R. You can see that we're running a 3BSD 13.0 current, which is what GhostBSD 19.04 is based on. 
if I do a U name uh, A for all, uh, you can see that we're running FreeBSD, GhostBSD, VM 13.0, okay? Um, and it's for AMD processors. So let me do a clear of the screen. Let me do a DF, and you can see here that this is the current setup of the file system, uh, telling you what's used, what's available, what the capacity is, and where it's mounted. So we have a lot of things mounted in this uh, operating system. This is Unix. This is not Linux. So this is going to look uh, unfamiliar to those people who have never seen Unix before. This is a Berkeley software distribution, again, of, of Unix. Uh, developed by AT&T and ported over to Berkeley uh, for open source. All right, so let me go ahead and clear the screen here. Um, and um, let me see what else I want to go. I want to get into HTOP, so I'm going to take a look here. Uh, right now, for memory, we're using 809 megs out of 1.96 gigs. Not bad at all. Load average is 2.43, uh, 2.30, and 1.53. Um, still not very bad at all. Um, got um, no, let's see, 53.4 megs of swap being used out of 512. All right, so let me go ahead and click uh, on F10 to get out of this and let me clear the screen. All right, so the uh, Ghost BSD uses uh, a package manager um, different from Linux and uh, any other distribution of Linux that you might have looked at before. It doesn't use YUM like CentOS or um, Red Hat. It doesn't use uh, apt, uh, Aptitude or Apt Package Manager such as what Ubuntu uses uh, or Debian. But what it uses is Package, PKG. And it uses Octo PJ, PKG for its uh, package management as well for installing things. And so let's look at the man page for uh, PKG, and you can see here that uh, PKG um, allows you to go in and install just like any other package manager. Uh, and uh, you can list the packages uh, that are available uh, using the else option. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just use the uh, install option here. So let me go ahead and quit this, clear the screen. And uh, I want to see if GIMP is available. So I'm going to do a search here, and so I'm going to do a PK, well, I'm going to do a sudo PKG, probably don't need to do that to search, but search uh, GIMP, and uh, let's do the password, all right, and so yeah, there's a lot available for GIMP, uh, but the GIMP is, uh, for English, is, um, let's see, GIMP 2, there it is, GIMP 2.0. 10.10.2, all right, and so that's the uh, version we're going to get when we install GIMP. Uh, let me go ahead and do that and click out of this and clear, and let's go ahead and install it. So I'm going to do PKG uh, install GIMP, all right, insufficient privileges because I forgot sudo. PKG install GIMP, and let's do the password again. And it updates the repos first, and all the rep repositories are up to date now. And then uh, it's going to go ahead and go out and tell me that there are 21 packages that need to be installed for GIMP. And I'm going to say yes. Let it go ahead and do that. Okay, so it's got all 21 of those uh, pretty much downloaded now fetched and now it will install those after it checks the integrity and it's extracting those binaries right now and installing them after extraction so uh, BSD operating system works fairly similar to Linux in that uh, means here of, of installing things I do like the Ghost BSD operating system. I think it's extremely stable, extremely secure operating system. All right, so it looks like it's completed that. And let me go ahead and exit out of here. 
And let's go and look uh, to see if GIMP is available. I'm going to go ahead and type GIMP here. And there's the, uh, the GIMP. I'm going to right click on it and add that to favorites. All right. And so uh, there it is. And I'm going to now right click and um, also add that to the desktop as well. Okay. And so let's uh, go ahead and double click and uh, open it up. And there it is, GIMP 2.10. And first time you open GIMP, it takes a little while to get it open uh, because it has to run a lot of things for its database. And it's initializing uh, various things. And so it, it does take a few seconds to do that. But on subsequent opens of uh, GIMP, it should open quite quickly. All right, so there it is. Uh, this is GIMP. And let me see if I have a file I can open in it. Uh, let me do a open. And there we go. Well, let's, let's take a look at that desktop image that I grabbed from the screenshot. And there we are. And so here we've got a full, you know, full version of GIMP, uh, just like you find in your Linux distributions. GhostBSD isn't limited at all here in this respect. I mean, you've got everything available to you that you've got in your Linux distros, okay? You can grab a GhostBSD uh, download from uh, the uh, GhostBSD website at ghostbsd.org or FreeBSD website as well. And you can go to SourceForge and grab it there. Uh, highly encourage you to install it as a VM and uh, give it a shot. Give it a trial run just like I'm doing here. And so this has been a review of the features software setup and review of GhostBSD 19.04. Have a nice day. And as always, if you like my videos, uh, please subscribe to my videos. Just hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you like the video. And don't forget to hit that bell over there on the right-hand side next to the subscribe button uh, if you want to be notified every time I upload a video. Again, thanks for watching. Uh, this is the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a nice day.